Today I'm going to talk about turning a recording into a runnable script. Typically you can't just play back a script and have it work as a runnable test case. There's a number of elements that are part of the script that vary from time to time. Uh, URLs, parts of URLs can be dynamic. HTTP, HTTP post parameters can be different. Uh, recorded elements may, may, might need to be changed during test playback. And there's a number of places that this, this information can come from. It can come, typically it comes from a prior web page. Uh, so the next URL that you're getting is coming from the page that you're looking at right now. And uh, it, it can change next time. Alternatively, you can put things in a rational performance tester data pool, which is user specified data that you want to change from time to time. Um, iteration, iteration. There are also RPT functions, random numbers, timestamps, and things like that that you can use for substitution. You can even even write some custom code in Java that outputs a string that you can then substitute in um, in a URL or as part of a test parameter. Or there's RPT variables that you can substitute from. And the process of doing this is uh, the process to turning a recording into a runnable script is you edit the script, you find the dynamic parts of the URLs, figure out where those values come from. At where they do come from, you create a reference at that point, and then you use that reference to substitute into a URL where, where it is used. And I'm going to go through that process now and show you uh, how to do that. Normally in a test case, the, the URLs or parts of the URLs are dynamic, they're not static. For example, this number on this uh, Google page is nothing I typed. It probably came out of a page, a uh, previous page, and so I'm going to substitute. Now, for something like this, it really does help to know what the developers are up to, and with Google I have no idea, so I'm just uh, doing some going to do some substitutions. Now one thing is I just removed the substitution that was there which was just a, a message that says I should substitute for this because RPT recognized that it was probably dynamic and I don't think you're supposed to have to delete those uh, substitutions before uh, doing this but I did just to be safe. Okay so what I'm doing what I did is I copied that and I searched for it in the test. I searched for that string in the test and uh, the search is uh, for pages, requests, responses, and what I'm doing is I'm also saying look in the header values. You can select the scope of the, of the search. Search, it found three matches, and down below it shows you where those matches are. So I'll bring that up here. I found it on that Google oh, first page I went to. Let me just show you a nice little link with quick preview feature. When you have that selected, it shows you a little quick preview over on the side, which saves a little bit of time, so that's a nice thing to use. I'll show you where in the page it found the, the string, a string that matched what I searched for. And in this case, it looks like it's in JavaScript, and it looks like it's showing up two places. Now what you want to do is exactly what the browser does, which is you know pick the, the, the string that the browser is using. And I have no idea what that is. That's a good thing to ask the developers. But um, so I'm gonna have to pick one of them here. And uh, normally when you double click this, it'll take you to the page. But I think because of the, re the screen capture software I'm using, it's not letting me double click. So I'm gonna right mouse button and say go to, and there it goes me. To, it goes and takes me to the page content, the response that had this content in it, and there it is right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a reference. This is something I can substitute from, and RPT will find this in the page, and uh, will let me substitute. So first thing is I'm going to give it a name that I can recognize. And I, I don't really know what this, so I'm just going to call it a set of numbers in JavaScript. And then I'm going to edit the reference properties because one of the things that you want to make sure is that you're getting a, the first occurrence of the, the field on the page because if it's in there 10 times, 
you want to make sure that your regular expression is ex explicit enough so that you're getting the one that you know you're getting. And you can edit this regular expression. Uh, but the important thing here is you want specific occurrence one if possible. Because if your pages change and you pick the second one and th there is no second one next time around, your test will break. So I created the reference. And now the, the wizard here is telling me, do you want me to find any place in your script that had this string of numbers? And I select OK. And it will find look through all the pages, all the URLs, and, and tell me that it found a match. It told me that it was in the URL. And even shows me where it is when I hover. If I select it, it'll show me a preview down below of what the URL looks like. I can then pick this test hierarchy view and it will show me which page it's part of. And when I say substitute checked, it will go and it will do that substitution for me. And I will show you. Right there, you can see it's now in pink, saying it's substitute, and it's substituted from set of numerals, numbers in JS, which is what I named the field. So that's, and then I can select that, and I can say uh, go to, and it will go to the reference. I'm just showing you, this is sometimes useful for debugging, so that you can go back and forth between the substitution site and the reference site. And uh, hover over it, it tells you what the reference is called. And there you have that. Okay, now another sort of substitution that I typically want to do is, um, well, right now it's the search term that I search for, which is Rational Performance Tester. And here's a place where it shows up in the URL. And uh, I want to substitute for that. But I, in my test, I want to have a bunch of search terms. So I'm going to create a, select a data source. I'm going to put it It'll show you the possible candidates here, but there are no possible candidates for this one so far. And so I'm going to create a data pool. I'm going to put a bunch of strings in that data pool. And so when I play back this test, I'm not always going to search for rational performance tester. I'll search for one of these items. Now, this is a CSV, a comma separated vector, sort of spreadsheet thing. And there's a way in RPT to import this into the uh, data pool. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So you don't have to type everything. You can have a, if you have a CSV with a, with your values in it, you can uh, get it from there. So I'm going to use a use wizard to create a new data pool. Say next. And there's a number of ways that you can share this. Now, when you have many agents, this is open mode. It says how the agents are going to share these values. Now, sometimes you need unique values. Sometimes it, it doesn't really matter if they the values get repeated again and again, but these open mode will affect that. And for search terms, anybody, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be unique. For some other things, it does. And then the access mode will say how it goes and selects from that list. It's sequential, random, or shuffled. Once again, here it doesn't matter, but for other cases you might really care. Uh, what do you do when you run out of information? I say wrap, just go back to the top. And you can also say fetch once per user for values that don't change for the entire test. I'm going to save that data pool in the data pools directory. I'm going to call it search terms. Say next, and you can type a description, which is not strictly necessary, but I'll do that just for the sake of completeness. And I'm going to say import this from a CSV. And I showed you the CSV before, and now I just have to navigate to it. And I can say that the first row of the CSV has a variable name, which, and which is what I did do. So now I just have to navigate to the location where I have that CSV. And there's my search term CSV. It recognizes that it's looking for CSV. And I'll open that. 
and it tells me I've got an error because the equivalence class is missing. And the reason for that is that I've got this bottom checkbox check that says the CSV contains an equivalence class name, which I don't have. I'm not even sure I know what that is. So I uncheck that. The error goes away. First row does contain variable names. And then it, when I say yes, it'll open the editor in the background. But since I'm in the middle of substituting, it's going to let me finish doing that first. So I haven't substituted yet, so I'm back to the substitution. And it says I'm going to use the search term variable from the search terms data pool for the substitution that I was starting before. You don't always create a data pool when you're doing this. Sometimes you already have a data pool. So now once it did that substitution, it says you want me to look any place else for substitutions for and it's going to look for rational performance tester, which is what I searched for, you know, what I substituted, and it's going to go find every place in the URLs that are reasonable places for substitution, and it's going to ask if I want to substitute. Now there's a lot of places where the refer is and it's overlapping a substitution that says that there's already a substitution there that's being made through other means, and so I don't necessarily want to overlay that one. So I don't but I do want to check each one. and It'll show me where the preview where it is, and I can select to su substitute from there. So I will substitute that one, and I'll look through the rest of them, and make sure that there's nothing else I want to substitute. And I can look at that one. Now I'll we'll substitute that one because it overlaps, and I'm happy with it. I'm just checking them out. And when that is done, I can say substitute check. Now it's going to, since I say always prompt, it's going to ask me more or less, are you sure? It's going to do one at a time. If I unselect the always prompt, it will substitute all of them one after the other real quickly and not ask, if I, am I sure if I want to do that? So now it'll show me, hovering over, it shows me that this rational performance tester string is substituted from search terms data pool, which is exactly what I wanted. And I can also select that. And I'm showing that because it's URL encoding it. Now, Rational Performance Test String has spaces in it. You can't put spaces in a URL, and RPT recognizes that. So it's going to substitute, it's going to URL encode this. And that's a good thing. But every once in a while, it substitutes it, URLs and encodes things that you don't necessarily want it to do. So just keep an eye on that. Now, this time, looking at the search terms data pool and you can see all the information that I imported is there and it's stored in the data pools search term directory a search term file and that's it